Angry police officer descended on the town of Jupiter meeting tonight, voicing outrage, saying they're underpaid, undertrained, and have a serious number of vacancies. Yeah, citizens and council members, in fact, clashing over an issue, and all while Jupiter police officers are telling us they're pretty concerned about their own safety. Particularly with how short-staffed the department is. CBS 12's Jay O'Brien was at the meeting and spoke with law enforcement tonight. Jay? Yeah, Liz, Jim, police officers tell us the issues that were brought up tonight have been brewing for months. They say they are concerned for their own safety and for the public's safety because the, the current finances of the department are being strangled, they say, by the town government. A Blue Lives Matter rally led to a packed Jupiter town meeting. A sea of blue shirts supporting police. Speakers warning of a morale crisis in the department. The your police officers are burning out under the weight of this staffing issue. Quit defunding our police. We need them. Police officers telling town councilors they're playing a dangerous game with public safety, alleging the town is saving money by refusing to fill open officer positions. Town officials striking back. By no means is any action that the town of Jupiter has ever taken defunding police. The police union calling on town manager Matt Benoit to resign. This guy has to go. One officer who asked not to be identified told us this agency is seriously short staffed, particularly when it comes to detectives and road patrol officers. At least eight positions still have to be filled. Officers also saying life saving skills are suffering because they're not allowed to attend training if it means working overtime. Our lives and the lives of innocent civilians depend on our fitness training and equipment. A string of issues causing an already tense situation to get dire, warns Officer Carla Irons. The two decade police veteran told town officials she calls her mom during every short staffed shift, concerned she won't make it home. It feels like a pressure cooker. A pressure cooker? Yes. Why is that? Uh, because you worry about the people who you serve, but you worry about the, your colleagues. Now, town councilors said tonight they will look into these policing issues. A town spokesperson said there are 24 vacancies across the entire local government here that they're having to contend with. But the spokesperson couldn't comment much further than that, citing a pending lawsuit. And what they're talking about is a total separate issue that's facing the town here, which is a number of police officers have sued in federal court saying that they have been stiffed on overtime payments. So there's that issue amongst all of this as well. A tragic story on the Treasure Coast tonight. A young girl woke up for school but never made it. Ten-year-old was hit and killed by a driver. She was about to get on her school bus this morning. Police over in Fort Pierce now are sharing new clues as they search for the person responsible. Our Lily Ortiz is joining us tonight with the new details. Friends and complete strangers stopping here tonight, leaving teddy bears and flowers for little Yaseni Rodriguez Gonzalez at the spot where she was killed this morning. And everyone we met is filled with grief, but also very angry because not only did the driver take off, but they didn't stop when the school bus activated its flashers and stop sticks. A St. Lucie County community is mourning the death of 10 year old Yaseni Rodriguez Gonzalez. Here she is seen smiling and posing in a photo, wearing the same shoes seen on the side of the road at the tragic scene. Yaseni was crossing Oleander Avenue around 6 Thursday morning to get on a school bus, which had its stop sticks and flashing lights on, when a driver heading northbound hit her and kept going. It was really sad. Seven year old Connery Bolito rides the same bus. His father says he would have seen everything but he just happened to miss school today. I see her every morning. I see that she looks like a very happy young girl and that's not something you ever want your uh, child to witness and it's definitely not something you want to uh, happen to your kid. Fort Pierce police sharing critical new clues tonight. Black and white images from nearby surveillance cameras of the car, a white four door sedan seen before and after the crash. It's expected to have front end damage. The impact so severe, little Yaseni was found in a grassy area. A witness embraced the mother after seeing everything. It was dark out. I seen the little girl, the mother was right on the grass and I was holding her behind her. 
holding her back and like rubbing her head. My heart was crying, I was crying. The site is now a growing memorial. I just dropped some flowers off for her, you know, I have two kids on my own and my heart's really broken for her and her family. Yeseni's best friend from Alapatha Flats, K-8, also leaves flowers. He is devastating knowing he'll never see or speak to her again. He kind of found out in school over the intercom. His mother urges everyone to follow the state's school bus stop laws. My condolences to the family. I really hope they find the car and the person. School grief counselors are on hand, ready to work with students and staff. And St. Lucie County Superintendent is also working with investigators to see what needs to change to make sure this doesn't happen again. All five school districts in our viewing area are will allow asymptomatic students back to class, regardless if they have had a close contact or are vaccinated. It's following new emergency rules signed by Florida's Surgeon General just yesterday, his first full day on the job. CBS 12's Andrew Lofholm is live at Palm Beach County School District headquarters with perspective from one of the two board members who voted against the state. Rules had been changing by the week, it seems, and this new rule came down just hours before last night's meeting. Now, testing has always been a focus, but with these new rules, testing becomes more important than ever. This poor little seven-year-old girl has not been in school for two weeks. You're Following another raucous school board meeting, the Palm Beach County School Board opted to follow the state in this case. Students who have had a close contact with someone COVID positive can stay in class as long as they're not sick. Two board members, Deborah Robinson, the only medical doctor on the dais, and Alexandria Ayala voted to defy the state. You were obviously on the other side of this. Why? There is really no point at which it makes sense to me as a board member who has prioritized the safety and welfare of children in classrooms who are mostly unvaccinated, where the policy released by the Surgeon General is in accordance with what I have been um, implementing in schools. The emergency rule will get more kids back to school. Superintendent Mike Burke said last week too many kids were missing valuable time in the classroom because of the old rule. The unintended consequences now our students are missing out again on a lot of instructional time and falling behind. He had floated the idea of test to stay, something just a handful of districts do in the country. A close contact with someone who has COVID would require daily rapid testing before school. Wednesday, the board expanded testing. Ayala said it's possible they adopt test to stay at some point, adding testing is more important now with new rules. We are trying to ramp up testing to keep schools and classrooms safe because without knowing everybody's status with this virus, it is really risky and dangerous and frankly unacceptable to put children around one another without knowing if they're spreading the virus. The district is expected to send out a letter to parents explaining these new rules, but the most important element is it is up to the parents and no one else if your student quarantines.